this is Richard Nikolai, FreeTheAnimal.com. I'm here on uh, the Y Beach area to uh, do a, um, a video at the one month point of no alcohol. And there's a surprise at the end, so uh, a good surprise, so stick around for it. Um, this is a restaurant called Vibes. It's owned by an American named James. I think he's from the Midwest. He's running a really good operation here, and uh, I come here often. But um, before I get started with the video, I'm going to have breakfast, and it is amazing. Be with you in a minute. Okay, how about that breakfast? Saw the pictures. Now, that is the 99 box special. It's the talk of the town here. Um, with the orange juice the, or coffee or tea, it's, which is 30 baht. It's like, 129 baht. So the 99 baht comes out to about um, uh, $3. And what is it? Uh, $2.60. And you add the 30 baht for the juice, you're at $3.50. Right. Ah. Uh, it's the. Yeah, you've seen it by now. Yeah. That's an amazing price. It is a better breakfast than. Some breakfasts around town that go for two, three times a day. Uh, uh, you have to go to a, you have to go to a place that does full English to to really get uh, something approaching that. You're going to pay three to four hundred baht for, for a full English. Now, of course, anyone who understands business and the business and you know, and it doesn't matter what kind of business. Um, it's, it's rainy here. Um, monsoon season, uh, rainy season. So it's um, it's a lost leader. In other words, he just at best he's covering his cost of goods sold, and you know that's his you know the, the wholesale food that he buys, and uh, he's overhead, which is you know the the rent, the lights, the stuff you have to pay whether customers are here or not called overhead. So he's just probably basically covering that in hopes that, you know, people will come back. It's a nice place. Well, well capitalized. It has a, a wood-fired pizza oven. Their their menu is kind of pub-like. Um, they have burgers and, and a bunch of other sorts of things. Um, and those are going to be normal price. Um, maybe even a little bit more than other places. But his quality is always good. Everything I've had is, is good. And and uniquely, he has a uh, he has a live band that plays from eight o'clock every night until I, I, I think eleven or midnight or whatever. And they're not uh, they're not a uh, a band that just does gigs. They are actually employees of the house. So, um, and they're good. They have a huge songbook. Do lots of things. So, uh, anyway, subject to this video is the one month of uh, thing of no album. Now, I know I did the four week thing here, but I wanted to do the formal uh, one month and one month exactly to the day, August 7 to September 7. And I have a surprise at the end for you, uh, a good surprise. So that's a, that's about as, uh, you know, that's about as clickbaity and, and um, uh, cooked in marketing and all these techniques that you're gonna get from me. So, you know, to motivate you to stick around. So let's cover this. First of all, the history. Like, where, how did, where did I end up drinking too much too often? About, about 20 years ago, I uh, got a house in a nice suburb of, um, of um, Will Glen in 1999, so it's like 22 years. But actually, it didn't start happening until about 2002. It was a, it was a fixer upper. We bought it for 290,000. Yeah, it's, it's Bay Area, San Jose Bay Area, and uh, 
needed some fixing up, which I did most of it. A few hundred here, a few hundred there, da 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 da. Then in a, I think about 2002 or so, I said, all right, we got, because it was going up, I said, we got lots of equity, let's take out 125K and, and really do a bang up with it. So we completely, completely remodeled the kit, I mean, ripped out the kitchen and redid the kitchen with uh, Euro style cabinets, all the semi-commercial um, stainless steel uh, appliances, built-in refrigerator, uh, one of the one of the countertops was butcher board, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we did we, we put a new roof. We did pavers throughout the outside, landscaping. Put in a um, an in ground hot tub um, and a fire pit, teak furniture, painted inside and out. Um, Basically, a, a really good amount, and because I managed it myself and did not hire a general contractor, I got more stuff done than, than friends of ours who've taken out twice as much money, like 250k. And you look at what they—it's like, where did the money go? I went to a fucking contractor. What? Well, dumb. Manage your own jobs. Hire your own people, subs, and whatever. You be your own contractor. Anyway, I don't want to digress. So, uh, so the history was, is when I started doing this, for some reason I started drinking more. Like in the late, you know, late, earlier and earlier in the afternoon and more and more. That persisted uh, for, until we sold the house for $840,000. I had 290, 390, uh, 390, so about, about, um, a little, little more than 400,000 into it. And we sold it for 440. 2005, five years later, made about a half a million bucks. And um, so, uh, so we we moved. We bought a new construction loft in downtown. I always wanted a loft, and that was kind of a party atmosphere. And it just and plus there was a, uh, a Irish style pub uh, just down the walking distance, and I just started drinking more and more and more. And uh, uh, then, uh, then we moved from there in 2011, so this is just over 10 years ago, and that's where it really started going down, where I was like, every single day, um, you know, starting whenever I wanted. Um, but, you know, I just, I'm, 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 you know, alcohol is a, is a stimulant for me, typically, unless I eat. So I had a rule. You, either you drink or you eat, not both. Right. Eating is eating any substantial amount is when it knocks you out. Or me anyway. Right. If I don't eat, go, go, I can go. So that became a problem in itself actually. <laughs> yeah. Potential malnutrition and onset sarcopenia, which I which I fucking totally cured since I in a month by uh, eating uh, good protein and going to the gym. I mean, I'm just, it's like, I just, the, the muscles just were ready to go boom, back to, back to the way they were. So that's a great thing right there, and I feel fantastic. I, I uh, um, you know, I was up at 3.30 a.m. Yes, uh, yesterday, and today was 4.30 a.m. I just, I wake up and I start thinking about everything I need to do, right? So that's the history. Now, it could be contributing that, you know, I needed to really get into a state, but let's run through these things real quick, because when I stopped, I was like, why is it easy, so easy? Because in the, I tried to do it many times a week here, two weeks, Monday, two, I think six weeks or two months is the most I went, but I hated it. You know, I was always looking for an excuse. Um, and so it never stuck in anything, and, and now my attitude is 180 degrees different. I have fucking no desire. I'm not fooling you. I'm telling you the truth. I go to bars all the time. Never once have I been tempted to say, oh, okay, just give me a drink one time. No. Nope. Soda water. Some places have iced tea. Some places have coffee, iced coffee. Um, and sometimes I'll get a get a sugar water soda. Yeah, not often. Who cares? That, that, there's a Schweppes ginger ale is pretty damn good. It's dry. I like that. 
um, and otherwise a Coke every now, a real Coke every now and then. Dose makes the poison. So, um, this has been no problem. And I start wondering, okay, why is it easy? So at first I thought, well, it's an environment. You live in a tropical place. Um, it's a, it's a kind of a resort town. There's tons of expats here. Um, and you have a good social <coughs> thing going. Beautiful girls, beautiful young girls all over the place. I mean, um, it's gotta be 10 to one. I mean, I I can put on Tinder or uh, iFriendly on my phone and have dozens that are less than one kilometer from me. And I've done, literally, if they, if they message right back, say, hey, let's, Let's let's meet at this place, Amazon Coffee down there. Okay. You walk. <laughs> and she's 22, 23, 25 years old. Yeah. Once Farang boyfriend. There was just a story in the paper up in, um, it was uh, Udon Thani, maybe Udon Thani, I don't know, up north near Laos. Some guy that got divorced from his wife then found out from his ex-wife mother, so his ex-mother-in-law, that um, that she now wants to uh, marry, a, uh, she wants to have a farang, or have, have a, 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 yeah, marry, a, a farang husband, right? You hear this all the time. And so he went over and, and uh, got into an altercation, which the mother-in-law tried to break up, and he stabbed her. Didn't kill her, but... Uh, he lived, they caught him. You know, funny thing is, the police are super here. Uh, when they catch somebody, they almost, the, the people almost always confess. It's uncanny. <coughs> you know, who discovered, I don't know. I know I digress a lot, so let's go get on. So I'm thinking, what is it that it's so easy and I have no inkling of uh, uh, breaking it? I'm like enthusiastically uh, proclaiming that it, alcohol will never be a part of my life ever again. And I'm happy. I, 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 I've lost nothing and I've gained everything. I've lost, listen to me, getting rid of alcohol, you lose nothing. Not one fucking, not one period fucking period thing, period. It took me a long time to realize that because like, oh, I can't, uh, bullshit. Bullshit, just drink your soda water and with a squeeze of lemon in it. And then watch everybody else get drunk and say, that used to be me. Drunk, loud, boisterous, stupid. And say, that used to be me, right? That always add that, that used to be me. Because otherwise it sounds like you're being, you're playing better. And another thing is, when I go out and they say, oh, you're not drinking. Because everybody knows me. I used to drink all the time, right? Everywhere. Sign some soda. Um, <clears throat> and I don't, I, initially I started, you know, I'm no alcohol. But um, uh, now I do not tell anybody, no, I don't drink anymore. I just say, I just say, nah, I just have a water, I'll just have a water today. I don't wanna, now some of my friends I do, I have discussed it with. Um, uh, uniform uh, support in that, everybody's, uh, everybody thinks it was the right move. <laughs> I'm talking to my friend Tony the other day, um, and we'd been on the outs for like a couple of months because of some little disagreement we had. And I saw that he was at his restaurant in the early morning having a coffee. I had just come back from filming. So I go in there, I'm like, hey, Tony. He's like, hey, Richard. Richard. He says, I heard, because I talked to some of our mutual friends. And uh, so we start talking about it. He's like, he's like, dude, it's the right time. He's 61 too. He just got back from Wahin six weeks uh, in the sun surfing, lost about five or 10 kilos. He looks good. So I guess, I don't know, is it something magical about 61? You start thinking about things. Um, and he's like, he's like, good, good move. He says, he says, you are really getting out of hand, <laughs> you know? And I agree. You agree with that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, 
Uh, the, the cool thing is, is the is the rebound. You know, I'm not I'm not I'm not one of those twelve step. Uh, you know, okay, more power to you if it works for you. But it's just not my thing. Like you're a you're a sinner. You're a you're a this, and you'll always be a this. And a fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. Yeah, you know what the alcohol proves to me, and look at me now a month later. It proves me proves to me that I'm a, I'm a strong, healthy motherfucker. And as much as I drank, someone sometimes upwards of a fifth a day, sometimes more, right? At least a pint for, for well, at least for ten years, right? Right? So just fuck off with your bullshit. Right? Um, you're like, uh, you know, oh poor me, and you have to go around and appall and grovel to all the people you may have offended and da da da. Fuck off! No, just get off alcohol and don't do it again. If they liked you before when you were drinking, they'll like you now because you're not. You're a little bit more pleasant to be around, right? Just you know, for your own sake, and that's part of it—the mental attitude, I think, right? Um, I, and, and I know, you know, 12 steps and all that, blah, blah, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. But I'm, I'm Richard and I'm an alcoholic. You know, 10 years later. Fuck off. God. God. Stop groveling. Right? Stop, stop throwing a pity party. Stop being a fucking victim. Get off the shit. Just don't do it again. Fuck's sakes. Okay. So... Then I thought that the, 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 the whole environment and social thing wasn't quite enough. And then I thought, oh, there's got to be something more to this. And then it hit me. Um, it's, uh, it's that I, before, I was in an unhappy situation that would have been difficult to change. You know, you, especially in America, you got so much, you got how the car games, the, the this, and the that, this and that. You know, the business, everything is like a responsibility. And um, so, you, alcohol was for me a, uh, a coping mechanism. Plus, I liked it, and uh, it didn't. I, I could still perform at everything. Um, so you take that away, and then you're miserable. Right here in in uh, Thailand and Rwanda I had no such thing I you know uh, even though I still had the girlfriend sort of when I started it I haven't seen her since December um, so it's all, for all intents and purposes uh, was already finished and uh, just kind of playing along you know doing video chats and shit and um, uh, when I wanted to I'd go you know get a girl for a night and which was which is rare one month, two months, something like that. Not, it's not like when I was in my 20s, you know. And it's not about the money, it's just a, it's just about I don't want to. You know, I have work to do, I have shit. Plus, I don't want someone going on, you know. Oh, uh, where are you? Uh, uh, are you, coming to, are you co coming to the bar tonight? Are you, you know, uh, no. So, that. So, when I took the alcohol away, it was like, ah. You know, I didn't have anything that it was necessarily coping with. I kind of used it to to motivate me to to write and stuff, and do videos. But I found pretty soon that I have that motivation even better and more energy to even be more productive. So there you go. There's that. I think there was something else that I um, was gonna say about it, but that's about it. I and I think the I think the last one there is. Um, you know, if your life is fucked up and you're using alcohol as a coping mechanism, then renew the alcohol is going to make it really fucking tough. Okay. I think that's about it for that. And let's, uh, let's get to the last part of it. Uh, you mind if I smoke? I know. So I said to myself, Initially, I said, you know, when I hit one month of no alcohol, I thought, best not to try and do at the same time, right? So I said, at one month, 
if it's going good with the alcohol, I'll quit the smokes. That was going so good that I said, well, maybe I'll quit at the two week point. And I'm like, no. Then I said, well, maybe I'll quit at the three week point. No. Or the four week point. No. But then I said, you know what? You said you were going to do it at a month. And so here it is. The last one. And I saved it. So I've already gone like three hours uh, without one. And I tell you what, this is gonna be hard as shit. Because I love it. The best cigarette of the day, the best cigarettes of the day are two, the two best cigarettes. One is the first one with coffee, strong black coffee in the morning. And the other one is after a nice meal, uh, uh, evening meal, right? But there's no such thing as a bad cigarette. Uh, so it's gonna be tough. So but that's it. That's the last one. So I guess I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna finish this out. And I don't know when I'll do another update. Uh, and I, I had said that, you know, these once I get to a month, then it'll be at most a month. And I, maybe that's what I'll do, and I'm, I'm bound and determined to say, yep, I've not had a cigarette in a month. So, uh, no need to wish me luck. I know what I, know what I have to do. All right, thanks for following along.